Anthony asks, what is your opinion on Joseph the Mest? Do you think he was a good philosopher? And what is your opinion on the counter-revolution as a whole? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, I love Demest. <laughs> you know, I, he's one of the great influences on my own thinking, to the degree that I, I think. Uh, now, when you say the counter-revolution, I'm presuming he means the writers of the early 19th century, like Demest, de Bonnard, Chateaubriand, uh, in France, the Schlegels and uh, uh, Haller, and people like that in German-speaking countries. Donoso Cortez and Balmes in Spain, and uh, uh, gosh, Manalo, or not Manalo, the other one, the party anyway in Italy. A whole bunch of these fellows writing at the same time. And they were all writing against the French Revolution. And the answer is I'm all for them. And the great news is that today, and, and not just for them, but also each of them in their particular countries, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, and so on, had left a sort of family tree of disciples down to the present. Now, up until recently, these people were mostly inaccessible to us in the English-speaking world. But today, we live in uh, the information age, and through the miracle of Google, Google Translate, even if you don't speak the language, say, if you don't speak French, a lot of domestic work is available in English, a lot of it's not. And you can Google Translate uh, the thing out of, uh, out of either um, uh, Gutenberg, the Internet Archive, or uh, uh, Google Books. Well, you can, you can read this stuff yourself. If you do it in, in Google Translate, of course, it'll be the weird sort of pigeon English. Yeah. And you'll miss a good chunk. But you'll read enough to get your brain going. So these things are all available to us now. And I think it's very important that we explore them. Dust them off. Have another look at them. Same with the ultra-realists. Have another look. Because they all have things to say which have a bearing on where we are now. In a very real sense, the... Revolution of 1789 to a degree 1776. That revolution's basic dictum was, you yourself shall be as, as gods, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That is the dictum that animates the oligarchies today. They are the result, the product of that mindset. If we are to survive them, we have to begin to revive good, strong thought. There's even an Italian a dictionary of these sorts of people, of the counter-revolutionaries, and it's called Toward a Dictionary of Strong Thought. So it shows you that thought can be strong, despite what you were taught in school. Okay. What about... So, are, are we talking more about restoration of monarchy, counter-revolution? What about, like, uh, the founder of TFP? who wrote Revolution and Counter-Revolution. Counter -revolution. Well, you know, that's an interesting thing. That's, it's a very good book, Revolution and Counter-Revolution. It does, however, leave out kind of a chunk of the question. And that chunk is, for want of a better word, the, the social justice piece. The guilds, the, the uh, uh, widespread ownership of agriculture which is why one of the charges, and again, I'm not going to tell you if I think this is just or not, because I don't know, but one of the charges against some of the TFP from Catholics right. is that uh, they tend to ally with neocons and people like that simply because uh, it's a question of purely uh, safeguarding the rights of the wealthy. Now, don't, don't be mistaken. The rights of the wealthy are very important. They are. Why is this? Because in any given society, and this includes our own oligarchs, who provide the jobs, who stimulate the economy. I mean, the problem when you say, well, let's soak the rich and, and, spend, and uh, distribute the money amongst the poor. Well, the problem is, if you do that, uh, the rich, uh, if they've got enough money, will just pick up and leave. And even if they can't, and you take everything they've got, it's all going to be gone. Firstly, the government that sucks it up from them will, trip, will eat most of it. And then what little goes to the people will be gone in a heartbeat. All you'll end up with are a lot of empty big houses. 
Um, so that part is certainly very correct. But it also has to remember that in a truly Catholic society, they are part of a whole. We're not the reason for being of the society. The peasantry play their, pay their yeah, I can say these words, play their part. I've had a lot of trouble with that word recently. I went by McDonald's and I couldn't uh, pronounce play place. I could say pay place or I could say play pace, but I couldn't say play place. It was hard. Anyway, so, yeah, I know it's... it's why, would you, why would you say that at McDonald's? Well, because I was reading the big sign that said play place. Oh, okay. And I found myself, and I was sober. It was terrible. Anyway, um, but that part, the, the social justice element, the distributist element, if you like, the social credit element, call it whatever you like, the guild socialism, I don't know. Call it whatever you like, that part tends to get left out of TFP analysis. But that is not to discount the value of the work they've done either. I mean, one of the problems you run into is that, especially those of us who are of, oh, I hate to use the phrase, marginal political views, is the temptation to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Mm. It's a big temptation. And what you end up with as a result are a lot of fragmented little schools instead of anything approaching a movement. So, uh, don't, don't let my critique of the TFP be seen as a condemnation. Because they're doing things other people aren't doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look around right now at the, at the scheme of things, you've got pro-lifers, you've got this, you've got that. Uh, well, yeah, but the pro-lifers aren't, aren't doing anything about the lack of, of decent classical education. Yeah, I know. They're doing... They're doing what they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the classical education people aren't doing anything about saving babies' lives. Yeah, I know. They're, they're doing what they do. The historical preservation people, they're not, yeah, Yes, 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 I understand. The thing is, what faces us is so huge. One opposes it in all sorts of different areas. And every individual has only so much energy. Mm -hmm. You can't expect... A pro-lifer who's giving all his, his time to saving infants to be agitating for the restoration of Latin to the schools. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And contrary wise. That's why it's important to see how they're actually, they're both working in the same direction. Both very valuable. I mean, I, I, I grant you that abortion is really is a litmus test. Of course. You know, um... Well, my candidate's good on everything except his desire to slaughter senior citizens. Who in their right mind would say that? You're right. But having given it that sort of primacy, it has to be borne in mind also that that's only one of the many ills our oligarchs have inflicted upon us. So what I would say is, uh, this is just parenthetical to everything else, but if you find yourself employed in one area or other of the struggle, that's great. Throw yourself into it. But for heaven's sake, don't criticize those who are doing another kind of good elsewhere. They're doing their part where and when and as and how they can. Do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Otherwise, I should have to disapprove of everyone who can't speak Canadian French. And we know how bad that would be. I mean, people who can't speak Canadian French are able to speak after a fashion, I think. The radical idea, but there it is. Okay. That's it for this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to Charles, you can subscribe to the Tumblr House YouTube channel. If you'd like to send Charles a question, you can contact us through the Tumblr House website. Thank you for watching. <laughs>